I felt the sensation I still get when I write. I wanted to capture something I would never forget. It happened to be the sensation of having a wreck. These jarring words describe the first piece of literature Tomas Rivera ever wrote. As an 11 year old, a car accident involving himself and family members did not leave him injured or pessimistic. It left him forever inspired. Rivera parlayed this unfortunate situation into a prolific career. Dr. Roland Hinojosa Smith, an English professor at the University of Texas and a good friend of Dr. Rivera, said, Despite of his love of writing, Tomas felt a calling to effect change through service as an administrator. I think that his love for what is now TSU uh, showed through. And of course they named a street, I think, or something for him. And, but he was very proud of going because he earned his baccalaureate and he earned his master's there as well. And then from there, uh, he went on to get uh, the PhD. But he just held it very close to him and it was must have been a great experience for him at San Marcos because that's what we talked about. I went to undergraduate school here and I talked about UT and he went over there and he talked about San Marcos. And and he called them, he says, I've got a very bright man here and he deserves to be at a new university. Well, UTSA was not made yet. They were hiring profs, they were moving from place to place, they were renting places before the university uh, was built. And he was in the middle of that. He would interview people, he would travel all over the U.S. looking for or having somebody come in. Rivera's short piece, The Accident, was his first original piece that would later add to a catalog of over 150,000 pieces of work. In his five short decades, Tomas Rivera accomplished a great deal. As the first person in his family to attend college, he received the inaugural Quinto Sol Award, Quinto Sol, or Fifth Son, was used as a symbol of the Chicano struggle for civil rights in the 1960s. Rivera became the youngest and first minority to preside as chancellor at the University of California, Riverside. Tomas sacrificed many personal enjoyments in order to create positive change for others. He specifically envisioned a better and brighter future for Mexican-American children. His most famous piece of work entitled, Y no solo tragó la tierra, translated as, And the Earth Did Not Devour Him. The novel has since been made into an award-winning film. Irasima Rivera, one of Tomas's daughters, a graphic designer and graphic design instructor, designed the cover of the most recent print of the book. From my perspective, like it's interesting because people always want, they do want to hear my people and my family talk about my dad. And I think it's interesting because if you are the person who's living with the person as a father, like he's your disciplinarian and he's like, you know, the guy who teaches you how to ride a bike or whatever, you don't have the perspective that the rest of the world might see them as, like as a writer and as an educator. He's like, my father. So that's my, you know, when people ask me, I'm like, wow, well, um, he was kind of, he was, I remember him making us do flashcards and, you know, he, was, he did the things that a dad does. And it wasn't until I got, I think it might have not been until his death, actually, at um, UCR, that I got the magnitude, right? The book is said to be loosely based on Tomas's personal experiences as a child. The story centers around a young boy, the child of Mexican-American migrant workers. His life is riddled with hardships, tragedy, and loss. The theme of loss is a constant throughout the story, with the years of his life even called the lost years. Rivera writes in the book, I suppose if you're scared enough, you're capable of doing anything. This profound statement mirrored his own sentiment. Rivera himself grew up a son of migrant workers who was frightened that he would never make something of himself. In his early days as a migrant worker, Rivera often missed school. 
he would eventually not only work in education, he would continue to be one of the few Chicanos in the time period to earn his Ph.D. Even today, only 0.7% of Hispanic Americans earn their Ph.D.s, approximately 193,000 total according to the 2014 U.S. Census. Tomás was born on December 22, 1935, to Florencio and Josefa Hernández Rivera. The family lived in Crystal City, Texas, a small town about two hours south of San Antonio. During World War II, Crystal City was home to one of the largest Japanese internment camps. Born in a place where a group of people were imprisoned, it was appropriate that this boy who would grow into a man who changed the world for his people was part of the first graduating class in the area to be comprised of a majority of Mexican-American students. Just like the little boy narrator in Y no solo trago la tierra, Tomás thirsted for more. He dreamed of higher education. But he did more than dream. He worked endlessly to make these dreams come to fruition. Due to his tireless work, Tomás eventually flourished as a poet, author, teacher, administrator, and chancellor. In 1958, he first received his bachelor's degree in education from Southwest Texas State University, currently known as Texas State University. He proceeded to earn his master's degree in education administration six years later at Southwest Texas State. Ultimately, Tomas received his Ph.D. in 1969 in Romance Languages and Literature from the University of Oklahoma. Receiving all three degrees in a matter of just over 10 years involved significant personal sacrifice on many fronts. However, Tomas never wavered in his decision to proceed for the betterment of himself as a man, his family, and the lives he would go on to touch. Tomás has been described as a proud and humbled man. He was equally as proud of his Mexican heritage as he was of being an American. He felt an analgum of the two cultures was perfect for his writing. In print, Y no solo traigo la tierra, it is written in Spanish and translated into English in the second half of the book. He also often integrated Spanish phrases into his poems written in English and vice versa. He desperately wanted to inspire and influence the Chicano community to climb higher in education. Tomás married and had three children, two girls and a boy. His daughters recall him as a loving family man and a great father, but one that was dedicated to his schoolwork to the point that took him away from family time. His daughters recall that he was extremely giving of his time, although he didn't have a lot of excess time to give. He was the type of man who, even when he became chancellor of UC Riverside, took the time to still instruct a course because of his passion for teaching and the desire to always give back. Tomás felt that he had the most impact as a school leader, the position he'd most cherished. By the end of his career, Tomás had not only written thousands of pieces of literature, he had also several positions as an educator. Tomás taught at schools in San Antonio, Crystal City, and League City. He held administrative positions at Sam Houston State University, the University of Texas, El Paso, and the University of California, Riverside. He held many positions at the University of Texas, San Antonio, including professor, associate dean, and vice president. His last position would be chancellor at UC Riverside. Tomás sacrificed in order to make sure that his children were still able to travel as educational and learning experiences. The family traveled to several places, including many trips to Mexico. These trips helped his children strengthen their cultural ties to their ancestral home. He was a passionate family man with palpable love for his wife and children. It is appropriate that Dr. Eliana Libratori, another of Tomas's daughters, became a teacher of teachers herself, maximizing the impact their family could have in providing education to children throughout Texas and the country. And he loved to teach. Like, that's the one thing that other people kind of lose. It's like, he loved to write. Yes. He was a great school leader. Yes. 
But I think that what people forget is that if, if he could have done anything, he probably would have loved to have taught. And that was one thing that he kept, that he hung on to. Like wherever he went in whatever his position was, he always insisted on teaching one class. I think that I, I loved learning and that definitely came from him or his, um, his guidance or encouragement. And I think that the, I don't think it's a big step to go from being uh, loving learning to wanting to teach. Like those two things are very connected to me. Tomas scribed thousands of beautifully touching poems and stories filled with sentiment, passion, and encouragement. He was extremely encouraging with his words as he would constantly remind others, you can do anything and be anything you want. A poem he wrote, Young Voices, encapsulates the way he feels about youth in education and how their voices and opinions need to be carried. He writes, Young Voices, fresh, loved by the wind, grasped, delighted, held by the wind, new voices, externally loved. Tomas had been described as many things, an author, educator, brainiac, passionate, family man, phenomenal storyteller, and an all-around inspiration. The intertwinement of his passion for teaching, writing, social mobility through education, and advancement of Mexican Americans are the things for which Tomas Rivera will forever be remembered. Tomas passed away of a heart attack in 1984 at the age of 48. He is survived by his loving wife and children. There is tangible evidence of Tomas Rivera in many corners of the United States. The University of California, Riverside is home to all 150,000 pieces of his work. There is an elementary school bearing his name in Denton, Texas. There are several other academic programs and buildings associated with his name. For the last 20 years at Texas State University, the Tomas Rivera Mexican American Children's Book Award has been awarded to authors and illustrators who create literature that depicts the Mexican American experience. Dr. Leticia Duncan, the director of UTSA's Tomas Rivera Center for Student Success, continues Dr. Rivera's work at the facility named for him decades after his passing. Um, so many times we hear stories about the influence he had on the careers of others because he influenced students to continue their education. We can change one life at a time. When you help someone obtain a college degree, they are able to change their lives for generations to come. And it makes a huge impact. Sometimes I think it's difficult when we don't realize how huge of an impact we can make um, by taking one student, one person at a time and caring about their education and their you know, interest in pursuing their degrees here at UTSA. The strides and sacrifices that he made to better the lives of others in education and social mobility are revered as much today as they were decades ago. No one can know exactly what the sensation was that spurred Dr. Rivera to accomplish so much in his short time on earth. But he left us with a thought that eludes back to that wreck. A thought that showed us that the wreck may have ignited a fire in him to help Mexican Americans change their lives through education. I suppose, if you're scared enough, you're capable of doing anything. Tomas Rivera I enjoy the most? Yeah. Well, meeting different types of people. Mm -hmm. uh, I think meeting different types of people, uh, viewing uh, and attempting to solve problems from a, from a total perspective, uh, sensing you know, the, whole, uh, the whole institution you know, that I'm mm -hmm. heading, uh, seeing the whole thing is something that I enjoy very much. So I think it's people and the job itself and the dynamics of, uh, of the whole total operation. Mm -hmm. is, is something that I truly enjoy.